Happy Saturday. This is not close to my mouth enough. That was weird. Today, we are doing some lore. We're doing lore. Now, before we get into everything, I do want to answer one question. I get asked sometimes when I stream, hey, how come you haven't been banking out lore content? I am. I'm just doing it once a month. We have a lot of stuff to cover in Palea. There is a lot of different types of Paleans that like different types of content and also there isn't enough lore in the game since it's beta to keep banking out two lore videos a week so we're doing lore like once a month okay and you guys know i'm a lore i love me some lore and today we are covering something that has been rattling around in my brain also before we get into everything i do want to say hey spoilers someone added me in the Pelia discord and they're like hey put announce that there's spoilers in your lore videos i i every now and then i say hey i'm gonna spoil this for you or something but at the same time if you're looking up lore like looking up lore is actively looking up spoilers am i wrong i might be wrong on that one I, but uh, yeah we spoilers all that being said let's go ahead and get into the video in the newest update we got to enter the last flow temple that was located in kilima bahari adventure zone this was the temple of roots to get access to the Temple of Roots, learn about the Overseers and a few other NPCs. This also is really cool to me, and I know it's not an Easter egg, and it's kind of weird that I'm talking about this around the same time that Fallout just came out, but the idea of Overseers and Pelia, which led to a cataclysmic, a, cat, cat, a cataclysmic event that ended the world, and same with Fallout, those Overseers and Fallout. I thought that was really cool, but I'm just a nerd and I'm geeking out. So we're getting back into it. The overseers are humans that were in position of overseeing, it's in the title, the flow facilities, or what the Majiri call temples. The Majiri and the human, they are like two different sides of the same coin. The humans, as it turns out, focus a lot on science, and the Majiri kind of put everything in more of a religious or, or just a, I, I guess, a magical aspect. So I'm gonna tell you a little bit about the Overseers and the other NPCs that are mentioned in the Temple of Roots. The first one that we're gonna discuss is Anima. She is the Overseer of the Aeroflow facility before the human disaster. Although she was annoyed about the halt in her research, she is more accepting of the power flow situation than the others. Then we have Galen, the Overseer of the Hydroflow facility and the university. However, it is noted in the game that Galen was kind of reacting pretty negatively to the king and then Galen is written down to be seen kind of a dick. I don't know if that's important or not, but I put it in my notes. Yeah. Then we have Hephaestus. Hephaestus. I can't read words. He oversees the Pyroflow facility and following the king's command, restricted the other facilities access to Pyroflow. Galen gave him the nickname Asta, while Titus refers to him as Hef. Hephaestus may also hold the title of Minister of Flow. From everything, by the way, you kind of learn that Pyroflow was like the main flow facility. At a point in time, a lot of flow was cut off and the only one that was really active was the Pyroflow. Titus, the overseer of the guard facility, or the Temple of Roots. Succeeding Vera, he created the gardener, but is described as somewhat unreliable and irritating, disliking work. I get disliking work. Sometimes I don't want to work. I'm my own boss, so I kind of like make my own hours, but sometimes you just gotta take the day off, and I get it. Vera Samaras, the creator of the gardener. Imbued with the oneness of creation, Vera is somewhat prideful about her accomplishments and has a university hall named in her honor. She received an irresistible offer to work in a new office under the administration to monitor and manage global flow usage, leading her to leave the factory in the care of Titus and the gardener. Before Titus, she served as the overseer of the earth flow facility, or the garden flow facility, or the temple of roots. Terraflow. We're gonna go with it's Terraflow? I, yeah, I'm pretty sure we called it Terraflow. In the Temple of Roots, the memos repeatedly mention directing the last flow to somewhat called Operation Cosmos, suggesting that everything would be lost if this was not done. This raises the question, could Operation Cosmos refer to the humans? This is what has been rattling around in my brain ever since I read this on stream. We we're playing Pale, you we were playing the new update. I love the idea of Operation Cosmos because in Operation Cosmos, I think it refers to the moon. And when I was younger, 
I watched a lot of Ancient Aliens. I still watch Ancient Aliens. I love that show. It's so great. But there was one episode in particular where they threw out the idea Hollow Moon Theory. And the dude that's like, aliens, he wasn't like, oh, the moon might be a space station. The moon might be this, might be that. He was like, it's a f***ing spaceship. He was so sure about it. And he kept saying there's a hole on the dark side of the moon that alien spaceships will fly into. So Operation Cosmos reminds me of that. And I've been rattling this around as a theory ever since the update and we figured out about Operation Cosmos. What if the humans were sent to the moon. Hecla mentioned sensing presence on the moon. This aligns with the idea that a select group of humans fled to the planet through experimental portal travel or some kind of spaceship as part of Operation Cosmos. This could explain why humans have no memories. The long distance travel could have wiped the slate clean. Also, yes, s some people think Hecla's referring to Umbra, the, the Phoenix being on the moon. Well, we can also kind of go into the theory that the moon has Umbra on it, and Umbra could be possibly more than just a phoenix god. It, it could be something else entirely, where the humans were able to go to the moon, and Umbra was able to place them in a pocket dimension, and then travel through time, putting them in a uh, like a part of a stasis, and like holo- I know I sound f***ing crazy, but this has just been something that I've been thinking about. And as the world has healed, they've come back. They, once the world is healed from the human up they are they're back that could be an option it's unclear what the humans were doing during this time were they frozen in time or were they living out generations on the moon the maji's perspective on humans seems to be more religious centered around embra and the temples while the human perspective as seen in the memos appear more scientific the use of remaining flow to bring back humans suggests portal travel because when you come back in the game you're like oh and Boom, you're you're there you're back in Pelia. and to me that also explains why you know that purple hue in the build, in the middle of the game i still believe it's a form of stasis maybe a pocket dimension in the middle of the moon that you know you, you get placed in and then umbra is there and they hold you in that pocket dimension and it brings you back now some people believe that gina is the one that triggered the humans to come back on accident however humans have been returning all over Pelia. Some say they started in Kilma, some say they started in other areas, but what has been confirmed is they've been appearing all over the place. So this raises the question of whether there are multiple portals around the world as part of Operation Cosmos. The size of the Water Temple and University and other temples suggest that there's more to explore, which hopefully we'll learn about in the future. I believe that Bahari was the central flow location where all the overseers stayed and because there's the university there, there's the other temples slash overseer locations and facilities. And it's confirmed that the Kilma area and Bahari area was like ground zero of the cataclysmic event. Like th this is the sh that will make you think. And I love it. I wonder the direction that Singularity 6 is going with this because humans are definitely more scientific. The Majiri are a lot more religious in, in the idea of all this. But there's one question that I ask a lot, not where do the humans go, but where did the Majiri come from? And I do have a theory behind that. And I fully believe that the Majiri are humans that evolved into these creatures that got infected with flow and they turned into a new species to survive the conditions of the new world of Paleo. And I wanted to see if other people had the exact same theory as me, if people were thinking the exact same thing. So I asked my Discord, hey, what do you guys think? Can you please tell me what your theory is about the human's disappearance and reemergence? What brought them back? And if you played The Last Temple, what do you think that Operation Cosmo meant? And does it tie into the disappearance and reemergence? And I got quite a few juicy answers. I was very happy with the result of this. And I love seeing what people think. It, it, it was so cool. So the first one I have for you guys is kind of, they, they both feed off on the, on the same idea here. And this is from Panda and Holly. Panda says, the tablets in the Temple of Flames mention a shortage of flow. What if the humans reverted to farming flow from other humans and the shattered creatures were the result? I have a fun theory that the humans were always around, but like the creatures in Pelia, Chapa, Mujin, and Cernuk, they're exposed to flow for too long and they evolved in a Majiri over time. I think that is a huge possibility because the Majiri have to come from somewhere, right? They can't just appear. And the Lord Maji made a Majiri, right? And the Majiri have a more religious viewpoint on things. So what if there really wasn't like a, a more of a god 
that created the Majiri, but Flo. And Maji was the first Majiri. That's what, that, that, that's cool. The second one that we have is from Simply Jess. I think something malfunctioned with the flow generators over time and the king from what I read in the tablets wasn't that attentive so the factories of flow died out. She then says that it, what if it went to the ground and it's finally coming back out because we've activated all these temples. Also, what if we have the option to evolve later on with the use of flow so we would have a Majiri customization option or something later on. I've discussed that quite frequently. What if eventually for us to survive we have to evolve into Majiri. that would be super dope i would have the pointiest of ears bean gave us a tall order here she says i'm gonna try to make this short humans played it too close to the sun they tried to tap and abuse the flow power which is highly hinted through a lot of past journals they got greedy and overused it and essentially a final fantasy happened where the planet started defending itself which caused the human extinction some people were exposed to an extreme amount which hit it on a cellular level. Think of ghouls from Fallout, <laughs> love it. And bam, the Maji. The higher ups, in order to prevent the same mistake from happening, took the few surviving and wiped all knowledge of what they did and tried to bury as much as they could. The Elder Beast linked in as a curse of sorts for trying to dabble in too much by the Maji. This, I think, links back to the flow of magic and Tamala type stuff. The reappearance of humans were a timed event to attempt to save us from the initial lashing from the earth. A number of people were sealed away with flow magic until the time was safe and the planet is slowly realizing what's going on which is why i suggest that we will have swords and such in the future updates it's slowly bringing back our people in the process our memories were wiped and the temples are slowly linking us back to the truth it also gives a reason why we come out as adults and not children i do think that we are going to get swords and shields in a future update and there's going to be a small minor combat update uh but only time will tell on that Raven gives us a tall order. Well, I reckon the humans were sucked into a different dimension, possibly ours. Now their ancestors are being dragged back. Or the humans could have been stuck in a wormhole and are actually the last humans who were in Pilia. As for Operation Cosmos, I reckon it could have been an evacuation of humans to another dimension to escape the shadows and attempt to stop the remaining bad from happening, like an overflow of flow and it goes horribly wrong, or an attempt to stabilize flow more effectively but it backfires. She then states, I'm really curious about how the shadows came to be and what they are exactly. Did the shadows only hunt humans because of their excessive use of flow or are they guardians of something? Also, I really want to know if the Majiri are humans evolved with flow. Maybe there was a flow explosion and permanently changed their DNA. I agree with Purrs that being able to turn into Majiri would be awesome. Yeah, I did have a flow video discussing like way back at the beginning of Palea of my ideas of what happened with flow. And this is kind of like a bank off that video. And I do like to play around with the idea that dabbling with flow ripped open a portal of some kind and the shadow creatures came out of there kind of like a, a fey realm. And that's how a lot of stuff happened, but that that's really reaching. So Chasm states, my theory is more straightforward and somewhat based on real life. From what was told from the garden, humans were advanced and had a good grasp on science. They still had the religious figures, but they were shallow compared to the Majiri who went opposite of the humans. There was the war, yet it wasn't widely known. The king was slowly going mad. So they found an Operation Cosmos to infuse humans with flow and then plan for them to sleep like they're in cryostasis and going to Mars these days. Chance art wasn't immediate. The king began to go mad and the battle was getting worse. So they enacted it, hoping these humans can come back and continue the race. Where humans went could be varied. A lot of lore is told by magical superstition clouded by the order's view of flow me and her kind of have the same mindset i do think that our character was one of the people that survived and were put into cryostasis the operation cosmos by umbra and was brought back but memory is wiped and things seem familiar but they can't really tell what it is so i me and her are kind of same level there what do you guys think? Let me know in the comments down below. Where did the humans go and where did the Majiri come from? There are so many things that have not been answered yet because the game is still in beta and they're still building the story. So I'm very excited to see the direction they go with. But yeah, let me know in the comments down below. But while you're down there commenting, be sure to subscribe and turn on that notification bell so you know when I upload a video. But if you know the exact moment that I upload a video because I will annoy the company with pinks, be sure to join the Discord. The Discord is a super happy and fun place. Everyone there is super welcome except my moderator, Brutal. 
He is it, but he is my best friend and he is an amazing moderator. But also, if you're watching this right now, there's a chance that I'm streaming on Twitch. That's twitch.tv slash PercivalGG. We just got Twitch partner, my dudes. And we stream Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays the exact same time I upload a video, which is at 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So come on in, check it out, and let me know what you thought of this video. If, or if you want to come in and tell me you hate my face, you can definitely do that because it is busted. Also, be sure to follow me on all my other social medias. I have Twitter. I'm not going to say X. I'm not going to say follow me on X because that just sounds weird. I have Instagram. All right. If you want to go see my Instagram and see the things that I do on there, that's also. Those are also in the description down below. But that is the video. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye.